Hey guys, this is Will from Loops and Worship, and I just really quickly wanted to show you how to create a stop track in Ableton Live. And uh, we're going to do this by using Apple's IEC driver, which is built into every Mac. So it's uh, it's there, no extra software, which is always a plus for me. And uh, we can just do it by default. So let me first show you what a stop track actually does. It's basically using, allows us to use a MIDI clip within a track. Uh, that's going to kind of equal the equivalent of us going up here and pressing stop, uh, which is live's master stop, or pressing spacebar in between our songs. This is useful, especially if we're working in arrangement view. Uh, let me show you what happens by default. So in arrangement view, if I have two songs back to back, uh, and say I want to talk in between those two songs, I don't know the kind of default length, then um, I can play that song, show you what happens. And then as I get towards the end of that song, um, my click might stop One, and then my next song is going to automatically start. So what I may need to do is kind of start that song, press space bar and then get ready for my next One. song. I could do that. But what we want to do is we want to actually use a MIDI clip that's going to stop live's uh, internal playback uh, wherever we have that lined up. So I have the stop track created here, show you exactly what it does. Get to the end there and then live's internal playback stops. Okay, So the great thing about this is I can move this clip uh, wherever it hits, it's going to stop playback even if everything else is playing, which is nice. And then I could go through and duplicate this and kind of drag it throughout every song and place it exactly where I need it. Give me the freedom to talk, to pray, do whatever I need to and start the next song. So let me show you guys how to do this. It's really easy to do. We're going to go up to um, our spotlight here. Just type in MIDI by default. First or second thing that should show up is audio MIDI setup. We're going to go there. We need to make sure we see our MIDI window. So by default, if you don't see this, go up to window and you'll see a section that says show MIDI window. Click that and that's where we need to be. And then we're going to double click IAC driver, which should be the first thing that shows up. And we want to make sure this checkbox here is checked, okay? And that's just going to say device is online. That's going to ultimately allow us to use the IEC driver, make use of it. We also want to make sure under the port section that IEC bus 1 is showing up. If for some reason you don't see a port there, uh, you can click this plus arrow and that's going to add one for you. But we just need one bus, one port, so we're good. So once we get that set up, we can close audio mini setup, a couple more tweaks in Ableton, and then we're good to go. So once we get back over to live, uh, go to your preferences window, and we're going to work from MIDI sync tab. Okay, uh, If we have everything enabled and IEC driver should be working, then you'll see input and output uh, under your MIDI port section. You should see IEC driver there, show you what bus we have set up. So everything looks good there. Uh, the couple tweaks we need to make here, we need to enable remote on our input, and then we need to enable track uh, for our output. Okay, this is going to allow us to route a MIDI signal to that bus, and then that's going to allow this bus to remote control live, Okay, our input. So all you need to know is set input to remote, make sure that's on, and set your output for track, make sure that's turned on. If that's turned on, then you should be good. So you need to create a MIDI track. Okay, We can go up here to create and do insert MIDI track. I already got one set up though, which is uh, already labeled stop track. Everything's good to go there. And then we need to, we can unfold that track so we can see our settings by pressing this arrow here. And that's going to unfold our track. And then in our MIDI routings, uh, we need to make a couple tweaks. If you don't see this by default, it probably looks like this. It may even look like this. Uh, if you don't see that, then go here to your show hide buttons to in out. Make sure you can see that. And we want to make sure we can see our mixer section as well in arrangement view. So for MIDI outs, we want to set that to ISC driver. I see bus one. Uh, it doesn't matter what channel we're transmitting on for now to be channel one. Uh, when I'm using video cues here, which you can see set up, um, I'm doing that over my mini network to control Pro Presenter wirelessly for all our video stuff. Um, and in this case, I'm not using it, so I just leave it to channel one. When I am using that, I normally uh, transmit on a different channel so that those don't get confused. So uh, stop track, we create our MIDI track, we route our our MIDI to IAC driver, channel one, good to go. Uh, and then what I want to do is basically create a MIDI track, a, a dummy MIDI clip, excuse me. So if I'm in arrangement view, all I need to do is just select a little bit of space and I can do Command Shift M. That's going to create that MIDI clip. And again, we don't need anything special about it, just a dummy clip with no data. And what we're going to do is go in and just create any MIDI note. So in this case, I have this MIDI clip here and C sharp minus two looks like is what the note is and to create a note and a clip we just double click that's all we need and it doesn't need to be a, a whole measure it can just be a tiny segment 
Uh, in this case, just for the heck of it, I just did a full measure. And then I always try to label things and keep them nice and neat. And so I labeled this stop. Okay, so now I have this clip set up. Um, my MIDI is routed to IAC driver. Everything looks like it's, it's pretty good to go. The next thing I need to do, let's close some of this up so we can see a little better. Next thing I'm going to do is I need to play my track so that when I get here I can uh, have this trigger that stop button. Okay, So what we're going to do is we're going to go to MIDI Assign which is up here in the right hand corner of our screen. Uh, anything blue or kind of this bluish, pur bluish purplish color can be assigned to something. Uh, so what I'm going to do, poor old battery's dying there, but uh, I'm going to go to the stop button. Let me delete this even though it's already assigned. Um, and I'm going to start playback a little to the left of where this clip is and then as soon as I can I'm going to press the stop button and as soon as this note fires, as soon as live's playback hits measure 192, it's going to play that note which live is going to see it and then assign it to the, the last thing that I clicked that was purple which in this case is the stop track. So all I'm going to do, just to backtrack, everything's set up here, MIDI assign and start playback right here, click stop and watch what happens. As soon as live hits that note, it's going to transmit the note and it's going to lock it in to that stop button. So now if I play, do the same thing, get out of MIDI assign, right? So I'm back to the normal mode, press play as soon as we hit this point, boom, our track playback stops and that stops everything. So again, the beauty of this is I can just kind of move this and align it exactly where I need to. You can see I have that video cue there, so video goes black, but what could happen is I play video goes black and then click stops and whenever I'm ready I'm going to press three which is already assigned to my next song One, press spacebar to start it and I have that count in good to go so that's how we can use the IAC driver in live to create a stop track